Uma Thurman is here. Her first collaboration with Quentin Tarantino, the director, took place in 1994's Pulp Fiction. It earned her an Oscar nomination. She has since returned to star in his fourth film. It is called Kill Bill, Volume 1. Here is the trailer for that film. For a second there. Yeah, I kind of did. Silly rabbit. Our part's over. I'm sure. In 2003, she won a Golden Globe for a performance in Hysterical Blindness. I am pleased to welcome Uma Thurman back to this table. Welcome back. Thank you. Congratulations. Look at this. Time Magazine. There you go. There I'm, it is. In Kill Bill, Thurman had to learn to act softly and carry a very big sword. <laughs> this is Time Out New York. This is American Cinematographer. This is The Empire. You are everywhere. Well, it's uh, it was an amazing film to make. You know, it, it was a long time in the making, and and then the actual shooting of it basically ate about a year of my life. So. Mm. It's, it's extraordinary to actually put it out. Let me go back to the beginning. So you're on the, as, as I understand this story, mm -hmm. you're doing Pulp Fiction. Yes. You guys sit around, you and Quentin and whoever else might be in the crowd, yes. saying, let's make a film about revenge. Well, it, it sort of started that actually Quentin, who's, who's always uh, attempting to educate me in, in cinema, since it's my life, you know, and know nothing about it. He's just <laughs> yes. always tried to, you know, yes. get his two cents in there. Um, uh, was talking to me about genre filmmaking right. and how in, in genre filmmaking and exploitation films they actually had more challenging, more powerful roles for women than even mainstream cinema and, and the kind of the great roles of Pam Greer and this one and that one and he started talking about revenge films and it was in that evening that we sort of went back and forth and the character of the bride was born and um, you know that she was an assassin and the wedding chapel massacre and, and the sort of group drama of all that and even when you're making Pulp Fiction he, he's had this idea yeah this was the idea that came out that night right. and then in that on the spot he invented the, the arch nemesis yeah. the agent of assassins the yes. ultimate pimp of assassins sort of the Obitsian um, you know mass murderer <laughs> um, of assassins um, and titled him, you know, titled the movie Kill Bill on the spot. And that was the beginning of the, of the movie. And he then wrote eight pages of it. Yeah. The, the, she was born the bride that night um, back in Pulp Fiction. And so he, the movie he built around that and the story he came up with from that Wedding Chapel Massacre was, you know, completely fueled by his passion for, you know, grindhouse movies and Hong Kong Shaw Brothers and you know, films and you know Sergio Leone movies, spaghetti westerns. Do you get all of that? This this is a homage, homage to all of that. Yeah, it's like every it's everything from those genres of movies that ever sort of excited him, kind of all wrapped up into one. You know, and and the the structure of Kill Bill, which is this road to revenge. You know, right. with these these series of of victims or or baddies that I have to take care of. Um, allowed him to really uh, play with the tableaus and the genres and, and each each chapter, which it always had a chapter structure, has a different influence to it. This is a woman, the bride, on her wedding day, mm -hmm. shot in the head. Yes. Coma for four years. Yes. Thinks the child is gone that she was yes. carrying. Yes, yes. Uh, comes out of the coma. And then is off. Off to um, rid the world of those child killers. Those terrible, terrible people. Yes. Who, in fact, are her former. Her former colleagues, yes. And uh, we have Vivica Fox and Daryl Hannah and Lucy Liu and Michael Madsen. And finally, David Carradine is at the top of the triangle mm -hmm. as Bill. He's Bill. Mm -hmm. And Bill was, in fact, behind everything. Bill was. Bill, Bill, in a way, is her, you know, she was Bill's woman in a way. So, you know, it's, 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 it's about love crimes, and really. And terrible things happened to her while she was in, in the coma. coma. Yes. <laughs> in fact, much this worse This phrase than, rented the, her body out. Uh, yes. It's, it's like a Francis Farmer sort of nightmare. Um, uh, it was actually much worse in the original draft. In the original draft, it was far more fleshed out. He toned it down a lot in the film. <laughs> he toned it down? He toned it down, yes, <laughs> How he did. How much worse could it have been? I, you know, a lot. 
a lot. Yeah. Man has a vivid imagination. Yeah, just to speak to me about you and him, Quentin and Uma Thurman. What yeah. is this relationship? What is the nature of it? You know, what is it that makes you two sort of perfect cinematic, cinematic partners? I don't know. I mean, um, partners, you know, he would call us partners sometimes. I call them boss on set, and he hated that. But he really yeah. was bossy, and he deserved it. Um, but to he, be called he, boss. He, he hated to be called boss. Um, but, uh, you know, we, um, I don't know, we're very different people, and um, he certainly trusted me a lot and, and has given me huge challenges. Um, and that is an invaluable thing. I mean, when somebody believes in you and trusts you and... Um, throws on your shoulders, you know, the power to change, change yourself, to do something completely different you've never done before. It's, it's, it's a real gift for the actor. Right. Get, I'm going to talk about getting ready for the part. First, there's the acting part, but let me stay with the physical part first. Mm -hmm. You were not, you did not grow up as an athlete. No. No, no, I was all elbows <laughs> and feet and knees and, yeah. you know, one of those classic kids that, you know, gets too tall for themselves. Yeah. Um, Early on, fell into modeling and everything else. Yeah, when I was 15, right. I, I modeled, um, so very, very early. Um, yeah, I, I was never, I, I danced. I danced and I loved drama and I loved theater. Um, those, were, those were my sports, um, <laughs> so to speak. Dance. So, the, yes. But dancers are great athletes. I mean, you, they have I wasn't even grace. very good at it. Okay, so you weren't a good dancer. <laughs> I just liked it. <laughs> um, it, it, was, uh, it, was, it was something I liked to do. But in order to do this, and he wants you to do everything. Yes. He puts you, or you put yourself, into a regimen for three months. Actually, the, the, one of the, the greatest blessing, something I'll never forget my whole life, was this experience of working with the master Wu Ping. The who same is, guy who did Keanu Reeves for... He worked with Keanu three times, right. um, and his Matrix. team. Um, I'd never experienced anything like it, and for three months I trained five days a week from nine in the morning until five o'clock at night. Are you serious? Yes. So that's just like every day. Every day, like an like an Olympian athlete, and I was in terrible shape when I started, and because um, I just had a baby, so I was I was heavy and uh, naturally, and I was nursing, um, so it was it was really really hard. This was like two months after you'd had the baby when you're three, doing two yeah. or three months, right? Mm -hmm. Really hard. It was really hard, yeah. It was really hard, but it, it was. Um, it was incredible, you know, I, 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 to find your own thresholds of endurance and have to push them further and then think you've met, you know, your set point, your breaking point, some, a point you won't pass. In this movie, when I would hit those points, I still would be only at 5% of what he needed me to do. Did it change you in any way in terms of your own self-esteem and in terms of your own confidence, in terms of anything? Is there anything that stayed with you? Absolutely. I mean, um... I just didn't know how. I just never knew that I could, I could, I could bear the weight of that. I could, I could have the strength. I could have the energy. I, I had such love, such reserves of endurance. Um, it kind of makes uh, a lot of other things in life seem so much more manageable um, to me. I, I used to feel so like a fragile person. When you needed, go ahead. Well, no, I just, I used to feel like sort of a fragile person. You know, kind of waif-like and. Um, and it's not that I don't feel that way anymore, but it, it, it made me feel powerful. I mean, it made me feel like, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm made of stronger stuff than I thought. And that's really kind of wonderful. Nobody better tangle with me. <laughs> well, uh, people will. I mean, I'm sure they will, but um, that's okay. I'm a big girl, and I guess now I know I can take it. All right. The acting part. What did, what did he tell you about getting inside the head of this character? What did you draw on for that? Well, you know, I, the amazing thing of watching him write the script and, you know, calling me up at all hours of the night or in the middle of dinner to read me the new scene or, you yes. know, we spent a lot of time together. He would come to my place in the country and um, hang out under this tree and write and then run into the kitchen and read it. And um, I got to sort of be inside the character as he was creating it. I got to sort of live with it for so long before we made the movie that... I, I I felt very much like I belonged in the character way in advance of shooting. Here's what you said. I, in a quote. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> we'll find out right now. Okay. He is brilliant, but my job was to take this character out of his wily, creative, seemingly improvisational world and to make her 
human. That came from the that sounds like Time something, Magazine story. Something I would say, yeah. You say that. So tell me what you meant when you said that. Um, you take this character out of his well, I don't really take improvisational it, world and make her Maybe the word human. out I, I, I didn't 100% use correctly. I, I think no, that's not impossible. The question is, too, you know, he, he put puts everyone through this incredible sort of film education of the things he's drawing from. You know, the movies we watched were extraordinary. He, you know, he exposes you to all this stuff, and um, I absorbed it. I need to see his references, but at the same time, I felt that my job was to stay incredibly centered in the middle of his kind of cinematic genius mad creation and bring the humanity to the character. I mean, it's quite, yeah. it's quite simple. Because, so what's her humanity? Her I mean, humanity is that she is been her humanity is that she has been grievously wounded and she is well seeking everyone justice. has humanity i mean everybody has humanity um the worst of us have humanity uh hard to say um <laughs> there is something humane in in in, in every right. in every creature that, that is the, the, the great mystery of life right how how can how can these things happen but um but uh, she, yeah, she's, I mean, emotionally, emotionally, in the beginning of the movie, actually, when you see volume two, it, it gets much more complicated. Um, but emotionally, she's almost like someone who, she had something to live for. You know, she was a killer. She got pregnant. She was going to, you know, she, she didn't want to become, be a life taker anymore. And she got killed. And they took from her the only thing that had ignited in her some compassion and some love. And so she comes back much more ferocious, much more um, hell bent and devastated and wrathful than she ever was as a professional assassin. <laughs> that sounds realistic. And, and at much all. Much more dangerous. <laughs> uh, the this, did having two kids mm -hmm. does, does it change your own abilities in terms of where you can go and, and and take a character like this? Are you more understanding because you have been through parenthood? Well, I mean, having having my children has changed my life, you know, I mean... It gave you what? Um, you know, it's hard to say exactly, but it, it um, made me, it made me, deepen me, it made me much more in touch with the, my real feelings, and um, you have to confront yourself, you have to learn a lot more about who you are, your heart grows tremendously, um, and you become, in, in, a, in, a, in a way, you never were in a selfish way vulnerable. You become vulnerable in, in, in the world because now your investment in the world, your investment in society, your investment in these two little beings. Um, who are dependent on you. Who are dependent on you and who are, who are so small. And I mean, when I first had my daughter, I used to say it was like I, as if I took out my liver, gave it two legs, and it was running around without me or my heart or my, you know, some <laughs> essential great. organ from my body now had a, had a, had a free will. Yeah. Um, and, and that's how vulnerable I felt. I felt like, you know, something, my life depended on something that was for the first time outside yeah. of myself. And, and it gives you a larger and deeper meaning than you never imagined before. Yeah. I think it hooks you up also, you know, makes you join society in some kind of big way. It's like, you know, it, you're invested in the world in a way that as a, as, a, as a single person, I never broke that bubble. You know, I was, uh, I tried, I tried to be generous or nice or this or that, but I, I, it, it connects you to the rest of the world in, in just a very different way. The movie took longer to make. The movie cost more than anybody ever thought it might. Although he says, if I'd wanted that amount of money, they would have given it to me. So you can't say it costs more. This is what it costs to make the movie. Yes. To, that we wanted to make. Yes. I mean, I think for what for what's accomplished here, the budget is not high. Oh, that's his point. Um, too. He, and he's correct. I mean, so the budget was not that high, and and you, there's no filmmaker in Hollywood that you know. I don't know what it went over. Maybe twenty percent or something at the most. Thirty percent. Thirty-nine to fifty-nine is something I read. So, million. No, no, only went over about fourteen. I think, million. Okay. Um, Not twenty. That's in, it, but we shot more than double the schedule. Because you have volume one and volume two. As yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, economically, I, I don't think that there was a big uh, a big problem for them. What makes him good? Well, that's hard to say. I mean, he's... One is dialogue. I mean, he, he writes his own stuff, and so he creates the most in interesting and unusual dialogue. And that's what we saw in Pulp Fiction. Characters talking about pop culture. Characters talking about things that ordinary people might talk about. I love Lucy or whatever. Well, I mean, 
I mean, I think it's a, a more general or simple way to put it would be he's a completely original thinker. I mean, you know, give, a better him, way of putting you, you give him a rule, he'll break it. You yeah. know, I mean, he he's it's it's actually the great genius of being a self-taught, self-created person is that nobody ever nobody ever told him probably or encouraged him that he could be good at something, you know, that he would be good at something when he was young and 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 how to do it. So since he probably I mean, I don't you know, can't speak for him, but. He, he had to teach himself everything, so he's completely original. He's, his imagination, his freedom creatively, his refusal to obey any rules. Yeah, but he is amazingly influenced by all of these genre of films, as we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. He's enormously influenced by specific directors. Right. You know, but they he, all are influenced by each other. I mean, film, you know, these kind of visual arts, it's like a, you know, they're all challenged by the next one. They're, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a giant conversation that's taking place all the time, you know. I mean, you, you bring one director to this table and have him tell you that uh, he wasn't influenced or altered by all the directors that preceded him. Okay. And are that you telling are, me that he's just like everybody else, or are you, you, you know, you well, just basically that, said he's an original thinker. I'm the, saying he's an original thinker, and the... the um, the stealing, the, the the referencing, the the feeding upon filmmaker and filmmaker is that is that is common. Is what is I'm it saying. Really? Yeah. I mean, see, I thought that was an exception. I think so. That was a, that was a guy like Quentin or a guy like Martin Scorsese, you know, who does the same thing. He wants his actors, you know, to watch movies to do to be absorbed by mm -hmm. the whole process. Other directors don't do that. Well, there's many, many different styles. I mean, I've heard of directors who screen test actors and then show the actor they cast the screen test of the other actor and say, see that idea? That That's a very that. good interpretation. I've heard of directors that, that um, rehearse for several months with an actor and improvise with them and incorporate that into their script and then cast somebody else. I mean, there, there's infinite varieties of, of ways to skin the cat and, you know, the pursuit of excellence, the you know, the, the wonderful moment of inspiration, you know, it's, it's, it's a free for all. What's influenced you as an actress? Who? Who what is in kinds of performances? What, what kinds directors? of performances? Um, What's been the growth? Well, I, I would have to, I, you know, I was very inspired when I was younger by Meryl Streep, by Katherine Hepburn, by Ingrid Bergman, by Marlene All Dietrich. All strong, independent women. By Betty Davis, another strong by independent Foster, woman. By, another I strong mean, independent woman. Oh, all. All, yeah. Well, I think you have to be a strong independent woman to, to you know, keep your head in this business. Yeah. Um, as a as a, as a great director once said to me, you know, in your line of work, there's a very high mortality rate. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, it's a, uh, um, you know, it, it's it's. Uh, in other words, you got to be tough to survive. You got to be tough to have a long career. You've you've got to. Be strong. I mean, tough and strong are two different strong things. Strong against what? I mean, what is it that strong within yourself? Oh, well, sure. Not to become um, not to confused. Be not to not to fall for the wrong aspects of your own growth. You know, to keep it simple. To remember that you know you have a you have a dedication to a craft, to a job. You know, and and to keep growing and to keep growing as an individual and 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 to to never rest in that. And um, you know that with each character, it's a whole human being, it's a whole investigation. And as you grow as a person, you know, to keep abreast of, of what it's like now to be, I'm 33. I, you know, I, I have a whole different feeling as a person than I had when I was 21. And, you know, not to, to, just not to stop, to allow yourself to develop. Here is the beginning of a 25-minute fight sequence in which you faced the crazy 88s. Here it is. You didn't think it was going to be that easy, did you? You know, for a second there? Yeah, I kind of did. Silly rabbit. Tricks are for kids. You also said a lot of interesting things. Here's where you said he had this freestyle and it's terrific, mm -hmm. but the movie was totally out of control. That's how it felt. I mean, in a, in, a, in a way, actually, it felt out of control because there was the the only rule was was him. Um, there's a lot of stop gaps on movies normally. You know, there's a lot of like yeah. 
there's a lot of it's there's a lot of other places that decisions get made and and how things happen and with with Quentin it pretty much begins goes and ends with him um, but do you like that I you know it was hard sometimes um, what ultimately kind of makes it all make sense is that it was two films we made I mean if we were really but did you know that during the time I mean that only no, happened no, when no, all he would have torn didn't... up and down it was one movie but yeah. we made two movies so as long as you thought that you were making one movie it seemed out of control in the context of it being two films it's completely appropriate everything makes complete sense to do two films that it was two films yeah. in hindsight some critics I'd say God I wish it was one film well, they, haven't, they would... haven't seen the second film, so well, that's they, true. they actually don't know the footage and yeah. they haven't seen the second <laughs> well, film. Have you? Uh, I haven't seen the second film, but I know the footage because I yeah. was in most, of, most it. of it. Yeah, so, um, you know, out of 156 days of filming, to me, the fact that it's two films is, is like, ah, oh, well, that's what Makes was going sense. on. Now All I know. If only he I, you know, us. He tricked us. Maybe he did, you know? <laughs> I don't know. What's the most important thing you've learned from Quentin? Hmm. Um, what would be the most important thing I've learned? From? You know, he always surprises me. I, I, um, I, I, I don't know. He, um, he, he once said that uh, I gave him wisdom and he gave me courage. And uh, I can't speak to any wisdom that could have possibly uh, come from me to him, or where it's landed, or or what, it, or if, whether I possess any. But um, yeah. he certainly. I certainly had to find a lot of courage, and more than I knew I had, um, in this in this adventure, in this in this battle that was this movie. Um, so, yeah, courage. I guess he gave me courage. It's great to see you. Great to see you. No, it really is. It's good to see you and see you doing well, and and the fact that this has been a good experience for you. Thank you. Kill Bill opens nationwide on October 10th, directed by Quentin Tarantino starring Uma Thurman and others. Thank you for joining us. See you next time.